In this video, I'm going to be showing you how you could create your very own web application in Python that will allow you to quickly compare more than 30 machine learning algorithms using the Streamlit library and also the Laser Predict library. And so without further ado, we're starting right now. So before we get started, let me show you how the web application looks like. And so the first thing that you want to do is head over to the terminal activate the conda environment and here we have created a environment called lazy predict and i'm going to be showing you in just a moment how you could create your very own environment in conda and so all of the instructions will be provided on the github repo we're going to streamlit folder auto app And then as you see, I've created the requirements.txt file. And so you could essentially install all of the libraries that I have on my computer where the app is working properly. And so no matter if it's a few months from now, the web application will still work because we have frozen all of the library packages along with the corresponding version number. Okay, so let me activate this app. Streamlit run and then the name of the app. Let's run it. So sidebar, you're going to be seeing that we have two major sections here in the sidebar. The first will allow us to upload a CSV data set of our choice. And the second part is to set the parameters. And here we have created two parameters for you to set, which is the data split ratio. And at default, it is using the 80% for the training set. And the range is between 10 and 90. And so you could feel free to modify this to your own liking. And so I normally like to use the 80-20 split. So I'm going to keep this at default here. And then this is the random seat number. So these parameter, if you change it, it will also lead to a corresponding change in the model building parameters. So let us use the example data set. And the model is being built. And so this is Boston housing data set. And you can see that there are the dimensions of the data set corresponding to 506 rows, 13 columns for the X variable. And for the Y variable, we also have 506 rows. And here it will be showing up to 20 variables. And so if it is exceeding 20, then it will be a long paragraph, but this app limits it to only 20. So you could feel free to change this parameter if you like. And so the Y response variable is response. So it is the last column here. And then this is the model performance for the training set and for the testing set. And so it is coming from the 80-20 split. And you will see here that we have more than 30 machine learning algorithms used for the model building. And then this is the corresponding R squared plot. And so here we have the wide layout. And then you'll be noticing that we are able to download the wide layout as a PDF file and also the tall layout. So let me show you what is the wide, what is the tall layout. Let's click on the wide. And so this is the wide layout. And so it's the same thing that you see here. And then the tall layout. Let's have a look at that. And so you can see that it is a vertical plot. So it's the same results, but then displayed in a different way. So for this one, you might have to tilt your head a bit to see the names, but for this one, you could just read it. So it is the R squared. And then for this one, you will see that the gradient boosting had the highest performance. And then this is the RMSE. And so we're going to cap it at 50 because if it exceeds 50, it will make it very difficult to visualize all of the other bars with a lower number. You will be able to download the tall version and the wide version. And also we have the calculation time. So it is the time taken for model building of each of the 30 machine learning algorithms. All right, and so you will see that this is how the code looks like. And let's get started in explaining line by line how it actually works. So let me open up the Atom. And so before explaining, let me show you on the GitHub. I mentioned to you that I will show you how you could install your very own Conda environment for this particular project. Go to repository, 
go to the ML Auto app. And then here, I've also included a link to the demo. So this is deployed on the Streamlit sharing. And so you could click on it. And so it's the same app. But then for this app, I've created a toned down version whereby I limited the model building to only 100 or 101 rows. And so you will see that in the local version, we had 506. But for this one, we had about 20% of the size. So this is performed in order to allow the model building process on the Streamlit sharing server to be run a little bit quicker. And you see that the model building is finished already. Otherwise, it will take a longer time. All right, let me show you the GitHub again. All right, and so here. So in order to create your own Conda environment, you will type in this Conda create dash n, and then the name of the Conda environment, and then the version number of Python. And so this is the version number that I'm using on my computer. And after you have created your Conda environment, you will be able to activate it by typing in Conda activate lazy predict. And so I noticed this is a typo, so I'll correct it in just a moment. And when you're finished with your coding, you could exit the environment by typing conda deactivate, and then it will exit the environment. All right, and so, but don't do that just yet. Once you have entered into the lazy predict environment, the next step is to download the requirement.txt file. So it is this one. It is this one on the GitHub repo. Okay, so it will tell you the specific Python library and the corresponding version number. And so even if two weeks or one month has passed, then this application would still be functioning. Given that you install it directly from the requirement.txt file. So you want to type in pip install dash r requirements.txt. And then finally, after the installation process has been accomplished, you want to launch the app by typing in streamlit run app.py. Okay, and so let's move on back. Line by line look at the app. Okay, and we'll also open up the application as well. Let's open up side by side. All right, so here, lines number 5 to 15 will be importing the necessary libraries for this application. So here we're making use of the Streamlit library, the pandas for reading in the data frame, and also to display the data frame. Lazy predict will be used for the model building of the more than 30 machine learning algorithm. The scikit-learn will be used for performing data splitting, for calculating the model performance metric, and we're going to be loading in the example data set from scikit-learn, and this is comprised of the Boston housing data set. And I've also included the code in the commented version, and so you could feel free to uncomment that and then comment the Boston housing data set in order to switch the data set from the Boston to the diabetes data set. So I'm gonna show you that in just a moment. And so for the plot making, we're going to be using Seaborn, and then matplotlib will be used for customizing the plots prior to saving it. And then base64 and IO libraries will be used for encoding the plots that we have created in order to make it into a form that will allow the user to download it into your own computer. Okay, so let's proceed further. So here it is the page configuration and the page title is set to be the machine learning algorithm comparison app. And so the name will be showing here. So if you modify this, then the title of the page will also be changed. And layout will be wide, so it will expand to the full figure width, I mean full width of the page. And in a prior video, I've shown you how you could build more than 30 machine learning algorithms in just a few lines of code using the lazy predict library. And so in this tutorial, we're also going to be using the same library and we've also borrowed the code from the other tutorial. So links to that video will be provided in the description of this video. And so in a nutshell, this custom function built model will allow us to take in a data frame of the data set. It will take all columns except for the last one and use it as the x variable, assigning it to the x variable. And then the last column will be assigned to the y variable. So here, all of the columns here, all of the column except for the last one, so up to lstat, will be used for the x 
And then the last column, the response, will be used for the Y, okay? And then 1.2 will essentially be printing out the dimension of the data set. And so here we have the number of rows and the number of columns. This is only the number of rows, and we have only one column. And then 1.3 is going to be printing out the names of the variables of the X and the Y. Okay, and then lines 40 until 43 will be performing the model building. And so line 40 will perform data splitting. So it's going to take the X and Y and perform the data split using the input argument provided by the sidebar here. So 80 will go to split size. So split size equals to 80. And so you could feel free to change that number if you like. And then the random state is here. You could also change that as well. And then we're going to be creating the regressor and we're using the lazy regressor function and the input argument is used as default according to the documentation of lazy regressor on the lazy predict website. And then finally, we're going to be printing out the model performance of the training set and the testing set after model building directly into these variables. And then afterward in section two, we're going to be printing out the model performance. And so let me show you. In section two, the model is being built. All right, here. The training set model performance is right here. And you'll be seeing the R squared value, the RMSE, the time taken to build the model. And this is for the training set. And then the second table is for the testing set. And so training set is the 80% subset. And the test set is the 20% subset. So this comes from the data split. And then in section three, it is the plot of the model performance. Right here. So st.subheader will be printing out the name of the header. And so these blocks of code will be from lines 58 until 73, will be responsible for creating the R square plot. And as noted earlier, we have two versions, the tall version and the wide version. And both of them are available in the form of a link provided here and here. But then we're going to be displaying only the wide version. Okay, so if you want to display the tall version as well, feel free to do so. And so for conserving the space, we're showing only one of them. Okay, so this is using the Seaborn library in order to make this beautiful plot. And then we're using the matplotlib in order to orient the X label, rotate it, and otherwise the X label will be superimposed on one another and it will be hardly visible. So we rotated 90 degree right here, rotate 90 degree on the X axis in order for it to be more visible. Okay, so we did the same thing for RMSE and we did the same thing for the calculation time. And in order to make the plot available as a file where the user could download, we need to encode it. And so we're using the base64 library and we created two custom functions. One is to encode the CSV file, which allows us to download the model performance of the training set and the testing set. And also another custom function that will allow us to download the PDF file of the plots. Lines 122 until 127 will be the title of the web page here and hashtag here represents markdown form of the header. So the hashtag here is the same thing as typing in st.header. Okay, and then lines number 132 and 142 will be the sidebar. So section one and section two will be allowing us to upload the CSV data of our choice and allowing us to set the parameters. So let me show you, we're going to upload a custom data set. Okay, I have to exit the full screen. All right, so let me upload this data set, the Dilani data set. And this is for predicting the log S value. All right, so here we go. This is the data frame of the uploaded CSV file. We have a total of 1,144 rows and four columns for the X variable. And then for the Y variable, we have the same dimension except for one column. So these are the names of the X variables and the Y variable. And so we're predicting the log S value. 
and the performance for the training sets and the performance for the testing sets. And so this is the corresponding R squared plot of all the model performance. So conveniently displayed in one single figure. So imagine having to create all of these individual models from scratch. So that would take a couple of hours, if not days, in order to do so. And so based on this result, you could then individually use the high performing models and then perform some model tuning. So please note that all of these are based on default parameters. So if you tweak the parameters, the performance would be better. And so you would have to perform a trial and error approach and do a model tuning. And so you could do that as your homework. And so over here, we see that the Gaussian process regressor had the highest RMSE and the other ones have less than 10. And this is the calculation time for the model building. Okay. Let's see the code again. Okay. All right. So let's continue. Let's refresh this. Where were we? All right, right here now. 149, number one data set. Okay, so like this. For section one, let me load it up again. So at default, when we load the web page for the first time, it will be displaying this message, awaiting for a CSV file to be uploaded. So what this means is that there is no CSV file uploaded to this web app, and therefore it is displaying this message. Let's have a look here. It is under the else condition. So you can see here that we've created two conditions, if and else. For the first condition, it means that if a file has been uploaded, we will display the data frame. So first we will read in the data set CSV file, assigning it to the DF variable as a data frame. And then we're going to be printing out section 1.1. And then underneath that, we're going to be showing the data frame content. And then we're going to be building a model based on that data frame. This is given that we uploaded the data set here in the sidebar when we drag and drop or click on the browse file for the CSV data set. It will be running the F condition. However, if we load the web page for the first time, it will be running the else condition and it will be displaying this message. However, if we click on this button, we will be triggering this condition, the if condition here. So we're nesting another if condition in the else. Okay, so this gives the button an action. When you click on the button, it will activate the if condition here and it will be performing all of the various functions here. It will be loading up the Boston housing data set, assigning that into X and Y, creating a DF data frame, printing out the Boston housing data set as an example and then the corresponding data frame and then it will be performing the model building, okay, using the custom function called build model. And it will be referring to this right here. Okay. And so there you have it, the machine learning algorithm comparison app. So I hope that this video was helpful and please help us beat the YouTube algorithm by liking and subscribing and also sharing the video to your friends and also making sure to hit on the notification bell so that you will be notified as soon as a new video is released. And as always, the best way to learn data science is to do data science. And please enjoy the journey.